I've talked a lot before about how important sections are in GarageBand on the iPhone or the iPad, but what if you've recorded something and you haven't put sections in? Well, it can be a pain to try and add sections in after you've already recorded the track because you've got it all in one big track. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the simplest way to turn your no section track into a section track here in GarageBand iOS. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And if you're in GarageBand iOS, then if you're starting out, you're probably just hitting record and recording your ideas. And that is great. That is what GarageBand is really good for. But the problem is when you get to the point where you then go back in to try and do your arrangement, do your editing, do your mixing, you want to have those sections that are so important in GarageBand. So in this video, I'm going to show you my track, which I've just recorded, and I'm going to show you how I can turn the no section track into a nicely organized section track. Let's jump into the phone and take a look now. And here we are back in familiar territory. We are in GarageBand iOS here on our iPhone. Now this is a track that I'm working on at the moment. And if you missed the first couple of videos where I recorded the scratch guitar and then I did a little bit of fun stuff where I recorded the bass line with my voice, then you can jump into those videos. They're linked up above and down in the description as well. And I'll link them at the end as well. But let's now dive in because we've got a problem here. What I have done, I've got my arrangement here, so I've done a little bit of work arranging this track. We've got like 65 bars of this track ready to go, but it's all in one big se section. If we tap on our little plus button here, you can see that we've just got one section of 68 bars, which is okay. We could sort of sort of fluff our way through this, but if we want to make this a good track that we're going to then be able to arrange and edit and mix, we want to put it into sections. Now, the problem here is that when we add a section, so let's just say we came in here and we wanted to go add section, all that does, if we tap all sections, is adds a new section to the end there. So it's not going to, you can't apply sections over the top of your track, it will only add them to the end. So let's just undo that one. We're gonna use this concept though to show you how we can do this. It's gonna require a little bit of planning and a little bit of fiddling around so it's not as intuitive as just being able to add in the sections, but it's totally doable. So the first thing we need to do is actually work out our arrangement here, which is I've already done. So what I'll do is I'll jump over over into my OneNote document where I've already got the layout or the arrangement of this song documented and show you what I've done over there. Okay, so here we are in my OneNote document. Now I use OneNote, you could use a pen and paper, you can use another app, you can use the notepad in GarageBand. I just did a video on that on the notepad there. So however you do this, you just need to map out your song. So you need to know how many bars each section has. So if we zoom on in here, we'll go through this track. So I always recommend a padding of at least two bars at the front. So that's what the padding is. That just means two bars of absolutely nothing, not even my intro, just nothingness, so that we've got a little bit of space to move on the front there. I've then got a two bars of my drum intro. We've then got eight bars of the actual intro, an eight bar verse and a four bar chorus, two bars of a turnaround, an eight bar verse, a four bar chorus, eight bars of a bridge, another eight bars of kind of a bridge verse combo, uh, nine bars of a final chorus, and then the outro is actually only one or two bars, but I always give myself, again, a bit of space at the end because we're in digital. We don't pay for tape. We don't have to worry about it. So give yourself as much space as you're going to need at the end. So Bluesy Song has its structure here. So what I need to do now is jump back to GarageBand and actually add sections to match this little setup that I've got here so that we can get ready to go in GarageBand. Okay, so here we are back in GarageBand and we're going to add in these sections now that we have our plan. So I'm going to tap in the top right on the little plus sign and then we're going to tap add to add a new section. If you're new to using sections, I've got videos all about song sections. They'll be linked up above and down in the description and you can check those out as well. So the first thing we need to do is section B here. We're actually going to change. This is going to be two bars because this is going to be our little padding that we have at the start. We're then going to tap add again. We're going to tap on the I and we're going to put two bars for our drum intro. We're then going to tap add again and we've got eight bars for her, our intro add again eight bars for our verse add again and adjust this one to four bars for our chorus now i'm not going to go ahead and show you how i do all of this you can uh, get the drift but what i'll do is i'll go away and do all of these and then we'll come back and i'll show you the next step of how we can get our existing song from section a to come across all of these other sections 
Okay, so here's one I prepared earlier. So you can see here, we've got all of our new sections added. So we've got the section A has just this one big chunk with all of our original song, and then we've got our B, C, D, E, etc., all the way up to whatever the last letter is. Now you'll notice here that Drummer has got excited and has put itself in here. So we're just gonna delete that. So we're gonna tap just outside of Drummer. Oop, we're gonna move that playhead. Tap just outside and then cover all of those. Tap in there, tap again, and tap delete. So Drummer has just said, hey, you've got some new sections. I'm gonna put some drums in them. No thanks, Drummer, we don't need that. So now we've got, you're probably already ahead of me here, but we've now got our song over in this section, and we've got all this blank space that's been conveniently separated out into our different sections. So you guessed it, we need to copy and paste, our old friend copy and paste. So we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna tap somewhere outside, drag a big box over every instrument and every track, and then we're gonna tap anywhere in here, tap again, tap copy, and now we need to line up our playhead for where we wanna copy in. Now we don't wanna paste this in to section B because that's gonna be our padding. We wanna to go to section C. So we've got our two bars in the front. We're there at section C. We can then just tap anywhere to the right of the playhead, anywhere again, and to the right, and then tap paste. And presto, we have a duplicate of our track here. But the good news is, you can see here, we have our sections. So we can see here we've got this track nicely organized into our section. It doesn't matter where your audio is actually split. It's going to just make it overlap into the right sections all the way through. You can see that's where our bridge kicks in there, comes down here, here's our final chorus, and there's our overinflated outro. So you can see there we didn't need eight bars, but it's okay anyway, we're all good. Now our final step here is we just need to get rid of our original song. So we're just gonna tap on the sections here, and then we're just going to hit edit, hit the little delete button to the left of section A and hit delete. And now in what was probably only five minutes total time, hang on, we'll tap there, go back to all sections. Uh, we've got our track in lovely organized sections. So all we needed to do here just to review was we needed to create our section. So we needed to just listen through to our track and work out how many bars each section has. And I didn't show this because it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna be basically be counting the one, two, three, fours that we have and then working out how many bars each section has. We're then gonna document that just so that we've got a nice easy reference. We then come in, we add in using our sections here all of the different sections that we have, and then we copy our original audio, paste it into our new sections, get rid of our first section, and we're there. Yes, it would be so much easier if you could actually apply sections to existing audio and tracks here in GarageBand, but you can't, and this is just a couple of additional steps. But the benefit you get turning your track into sections is that we can now move sections around, we can control what we do in all those different sections, we can put quantizing in different sections, there's a whole bunch of benefits. And again, if you want to check out my videos all about about song sections, I go into a heap more detail about why you would want to use sections. Okay, I think I've said sections a hundred times, so this video is at an end. If you've got any further information you'd like to add or other tips and ideas that you want to pass on, I'd love to hear about them. But for now, I'm going to get back to actually recording these parts properly and improving on this demo version. And there you have it. We had no sections, now we have sections. So I hope you found this useful. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down below, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. We've got a heap more videos all about GarageBand iOS right here on the channel. In fact, two are linked right down below. You can also subscribe to the channel over there on the right by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon or head to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.